Hello everyone, we are in the dreaded 24 hour maintenance for patch 6.38. Gosh, the wait is actually much harder than I expected. But while we wait, we might as well take a look at the patch notes and tell us why we are waiting for all this time. What are they updating this time around? So first we have some changes to the barrel system, more specifically the raid. The weekly restriction on receiving unsung blaze of abysses from abysses the age circle has been removed so by tomorrow you can start just spamming that instance so you can get the weapons for all of your characters if you're so inclined they will also be making the following adjustments to pandemonium abysses the savage two treasure coffers will now always appear at the end furthermore the weekly restriction on reward obtained from coffers has been removed the weekly entrance restriction on all areas of Pandemonium Abyssus has been removed and players may now proceed directly to any circle of Pandemonium Abyssus Savage. So you Savage player are going to have way more freedom now to just work on getting anything you're missing for your character. You also have some updates to enhancements. The items required to enhance weapon purchased with elegant tombstones of causality, Moonshine Brine, can be purchased from the following vendor. Nesvas at Ratsatan, for one Aglayan coin and one Euphrosyne coin. After acquiring the item to enhance your equipment, speak with Khalid in Ratsatan and exchange them for augmented gear of your choice. Now that is the PvE side, but now it's time to take a look at the PvP side. First of all, they're making some changes to the PvP actions, so listen up to see if your role is having any changes, because not every job is getting changes this time around. First of all, Paladins, you're getting a little bit of a nerf. Phalanx is getting damage reduction from 50% to 33%. Warriors, you're in the same boat with the action Blota. The heavy effect duration has been reduced from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. On the other hand, Monks, you seem to be getting a little bit of a buff. Using Phantom Rush, your potency has been increased from 10,000 to 12,000. It's always a happy day when you get a little bit of a buff. Next is Dragoons, you're getting like a big change to Sky Shatter, so potency has been reduced from 20,000 to 18,000, but potency has increased when targets are within 5 Yelms from 30,000 to 32,000. The barrier strength has also changed, so before it used to absorb 25% of your maximum health, but now it absorbs damage equivalent to the heal of a 24,000 potency. Ninja, you're getting three changes and they are all the same. So for Fuma Shuriken, Iyosa Ranryu and Goka Mekayaku, the range is being reduced from 25 Yalms to 20. So just keep in mind next time you go in, that your range might feel a little bit off. You're gonna want to be closer than you used to be. For Reapers, Plentiful Harvest, maximum potency has been increased from 20,000 to 24,000. And for Dancer, the healing potency of Curing Walls has been increased from 8,000 to 10,000. Black Mages, you're also getting a buff, with the barrier strength of Burst being increased from 12,000 to 16,000. The final three changes are for Red Mage, Scholar and Astrologian. So, Red Mage, you are getting three changes this time around. For Magic Barrier, the effect duration has been increased from 8 seconds to 10 seconds. They did the same with Frazzle, so Southern Cross is also having quite a bit of change. So Healing Potency and Damage Potency are both being increased from 6000 to 8000. But the Cure Potency increase from White Shift has been reduced from 100% to 50%. And they did the same with the Damage Potency from Black Shift. Scholars, they decided to make some adjustment to Adlokium. The cure potency has been reduced from 4000 to 3000, but the barrier strength has been increased from 4000 to 6000. So just keep that in mind, the healing is going to be less, but the barrier strength is going to be higher. And finally, Astrologian, with the ability Fall Malefic, the recast timer reduction granted by the additional factor reduces, the recast time of double cast has been changed from 7.5 to 10 seconds. They're also making some changes to the crystalline conflict. So the time until the tactical crystal is unbound has been reduced from 30 seconds to 20 seconds. 
apparently to match this better they have also made some adjustments to certain music tracks during the matches, except the track Festival of the Hunt from Endwalker. The probability of triggering a pneumatic parade on the Clockwork Castle Town stage has been adjusted to increase the chance of a second parade. And finally, and probably most important, Season 5 is ending and Season 6 is beginning. When the season ends, the top 100 ranking players from each data center will receive voucher via the Muggle delivery service. Player finishing in bronze tier or higher can claim reward by speaking with the seasonal quartermaster at the Wolf's Den. And at the start of the next season, you will be placed 5 rises below your final placement in Season 5 with 0 rising stars. The season's rewards are the following. For rank, you are getting 10,000 trophy crystals and the Season 5 final conflict frame kit. For rank 2 to 30, you will get the Season 5 endless conflict frame kit and 6,000 trophy crystals. The rank 31st to 100th is getting Season 5 Rising Conflict Framer Kit and 3,000 Trophy Crystals. There will also be special rewards depending on which tier you end up in. Make note that both the ranking rewards and the tier rewards give you everything in the ranks or tiers below you. This only applies to the portrait kits, but basically if you finish in the crystal tier, you will also get the diamond portrait. So, if you finish in the crystal rank, you will get 6,000 trophy crystals and the crystal rank framers kit. For diamond, you will get the framers kit for the diamond and 5,000 trophy crystals. And in platinum, you get the platinum framer kit and 4,000 trophy crystals. For gold, you get the gold framer kit and 3,000 trophy crystals. For silver, you get the silver framer kit and 2,000 trophy crystals. And for the bronze, you get the bronze frame kit and 1,000 trophy crystals. I'm gonna say these all look really nice, though I think I am quite partial to the diamond one myself. But I look forward to seeing some adventure plates showing up with these frames. And finally, like with every patch, they did work on resolving some issues. So let's read through them together. An issue with Yurik Orthos, wherein the timing with which the enemy Orthos Gulo Gulo executed certain attacks was incorrect, so they fixed that. There was also an issue in Eureka Orthos where damage dealt when equipped with Orthosian Ether Pool gear upgraded plus 4 was lower than intended. We also apparently had an issue with the player maximum HP when equipped with the Orthos Ether Pool gear upgraded to plus 13 was lower than intended. They've also sorted out a visual issue where the graphics of the feet gear Valentine Rose heels did not display correctly when equipped by May Lalafels. May Lalas rejoice, you can go get those shoes and they should look correctly right now. They also sorted an issue where the third tier of the Splendorous tool for Disciple of the Land, introduced in patch 6.35, were missing the attribute. Now make note they did do a hotfix March 9th, where they fixed that the tool didn't have the upgrade, so you always had the buff, but now it's going to show up correctly in the text for the item. They have fixed an issue in the island sanctuary, where certain carrot strings could not be used for naming animals. Now I'm really curious what you guys were trying to name your animals and getting a no on. But it was still innocent enough that they had to fix it. And the final issue they solved is one where using the character naming service while visiting another data center prevented the player from logging into the game under certain conditions. They're quite vague on this, I don't know what the certain conditions were, but basically, apparently, if you renamed your character while being on another data center and some other condition seems to be active, you could not log into your character, which is really annoying. So that has been sorted. And they've also fixed some other various issues, but they did not make note of them here. And that is the patch notes. They fixed some issues, they buffed some PvP jobs, nerfed some others, and honestly the two biggest changes this patch are, the service raid is now open for you to get all the loot you want, and the new PvP season is starting. So if you didn't join the last PvP season, but you kind of want to get into PvP, this is the time to get into it. I wish you PvP people all the best of luck. Enjoy your frames, and I look forward to seeing all your pretty portraits. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If you like this covering, you know, do all the good YouTube stuff. 
But whatever you end up doing, I hope you have a lovely day.